This program is being presented to you by the Horaeus International Winter School on Gravity and Light. Welcome back to the WE Horaeus International Winter School on Gravity and Light. Today with our ninth problem sheet on metric manifolds. As always, we start with the short true or false section. Let's begin. The levi Schivita connection is torsion-free. That's true, since we, all, since we just look at torsion-free connections. The levi Schivita connection is called metric compatible, since it satisfies this equation. This is not true, since for um, the, com the compatibility condition means, instead of the g here, a zero, the zero vector. The levi Civita connection is the unique affine connection that can be constructed from the data of a metric manifold. This statement is true, and we will see this in exercise 3 of this problem sheet. The levi civita connection gives rise to connection coefficient functions with gamma RA symmetries, symmetry, symmetry bracket BC equals to zero in any chart. This is not true, since this part of the connection coefficients are not of tensorial character, so maybe they vanish in one chart, but surely not in any. The levi civita connection arises by requiring that the outer parallels are the curves of stationary length. That's quite true, and we also will see that, or we already saw that in the lectures. So in this question, only Answer 1, 3, and 5 are correct. Number B. Which statements about metrics on a d dimensional smooth manifold are correct? The first question is a metric with signature DD is called a Riemannian metric. This is not true since a Riemannian metric has the signature D0 or 0D. A Lorentzian metric has signature. 1, comma, d minus 1. That's quite true, or it could also be d minus 1, 1. On a Lorentzian manifold, vectors x of tpm are called g null vectors if g of x, comma, x equals to 0. That's exactly the definition of g null vectors, therefore the statement is right. A metric provides an inner product on each tangent space tpm. That is not correct, since for an inner product, we need the positive definite, the positive definiteness. And this is not given for any kind of signature. It's true for a Riemannian metric, but it's not true for any other. An inverse metric fed with a covector yields a real number. That's not true, since an inverse metric eats two covectors, and if you just fed one in, you have one slot left with where you can fit in, fed in a covector, so it's a one zero tensor field. Which statements about geodesics and the length of a curve are correct? A Riemannian metric gives rise to a well-defined notion of length of a curve. That's true. The length of a curve is obviously not invariant under a reparameterization of this curve. This statement is not true, since here is written a not. Under some circumstances, circumstances, the curve length is invariant under reparameterization. We will see this later on. So this statement is incorrect. A geodesic is a curve of minimal length. That's not true. A geodesic is a curve of stationary length. The condition for curve to be of stationary length is that it be a solution of the Euler-Lagrange equations for the Lagrangian L of x equals to square root of g of x, comma x. That's quite true. We already see this in the lectures. A geodesic on a metric manifold satisfies the autoparallel equation. Therefore, some words have to be said. Geodesics describes the shor shortest curve the shortest curves between 
two points. And the outer parallel describes the straightest curves between two points. So these two notions are in general disjunct, disjoint. But we can see that if we choose the levi civita connection, these two notions are the same. We continue with exercise 2, recognizing and dealing with different signatures. First, there is a statement written. Other than 1-1 one, one tensors, 0-2 tensors do not have eigenvalues but signature. And signature is the topic of this exercise. Let G be a symmetric 0-2 tensor over some vector space. Question. You are given the following four sets of chinal vectors in the vector space. The surface of a double cone centered in the origin, a point in the origin, a straight line through the origin, and the plane through the origin of the vector space. We are now asked to determine the possible signatures of the respective chi in each of the four cases. So, since we are in a vector space, I firstly will introduce a coordinate system. I call the axes x1, x2, and x3. Now, now we have to think about what is the equation for the cone surface. The equation for the cone surface is x1 squared plus x2 squared plus x3 squared equal to zero. Minus, I'm sorry, minus x3 squared equal to zero. This can be fulfilled by g of x, comma x, in, this, in the following signature sense. We first take plus, plus, minus, which yields exactly that. But it also could be that we take minus, minus, plus, which yields the same equation, but, but with different signs. Here a minus, here a minus, here a plus. But since this is zero, we can just multiply with minus one and get the same result. So this is the signature for case A. Case B. In case B, we just see that the chinal vectors are the point in the origin. What does that mean? That does mean that <coughs> we only want g of x, x equals to zero for the null vector. But therefore, it should not be possible that we can add some, co some squares of vectors up, some squares of components of vectors up to zero. Yeah, this is, possi this is not possible. If we just have plus, 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 then we never will end with a zero or minus, minus, minus without taking the null vector. So this is the signature for this kind, for this tape, kind. Number C. We see here that the straight line through the origin should be the set of all G null vectors. That would mean that we need the signature plus, plus, null, or minus, minus, null. Since we just want to plug in for the x3 everything we want, and it doesn't count, but the first, the other two entries should not be able to add up to zero. This is exactly given by this, by this signature. In case D, we see the plane. The argument is similar, but a little bit different to the case C. In this case, we just have, that is, let me think about the right correct, it is zero, zero plus, or zero, zero minus. I repeat the argument once again. We, want, we, we should be able to plug in for x1 and x2 everything we like to, and it doesn't matter, but for x3, yeah, it never could up, it never could add, add up to zero because it's just one component. So, in the end, these are all the possible signatures. In the next question, we are asked, for each signature you found, indicate the set of vectors of positive length in the drawings. 
therefore we have to yeah, look at each signature. First, we look at the minus minus plus signature of the cone. I indicated by that, and all positive lengths are on the outside of the cone, as you can easily calculate. For this signature type, we see that all positive vectors lie in the cone. This is interesting for general relativity later on. For plus, 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 or minus, 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 only the plus, plus, plus have some positive length. But then it's all around the point, without the point. For minus, 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 we just have negative length. In the plane, the same argument holds for the plus, plus, plus. Uh, not for the plane, I'm sorry, for the straight line. Everything outside for the plus, plus, zero signature. And for the minus, minus signature, we don't have any positive length. And the same argument holds again for the plane, where we have everything outside for the signature null, null, plus is of positive length. And for the signature of null, null, minus, there is no positive length. Okay, therefore exercise 2 is complete. We continue with exercise 3, levi shivita connection. For vanishing tensor torsion, the levi shivita connection is already uniquely determined by the requirement nabla of g equals to 0. Let's start. Suppose we have a torsion-free and metric compatible connection. That means vanishing rank 3 tensor fields. T is the torsion which we set on zero and nabla of G is equal to zero, where G is a zero two tensor field, so it eats two vectors, but although the covariant derivative have, has here an open slot where you have to fed in a vector, in this sense this object is a zero three tensor field. Okay, first we are asked to recall what t equals zero implies for the connection coefficient functions with respect to a chart. I first write down the definition of the component functions t a b c is equal to one half, not one half, gamma a b c minus gamma a c b equals zero. If this is the case, we see that all um, anti-symmetric components are already zero. We also can write down gamma ABC equals to gamma ABC plus gamma ABC. But since this is the definition of the torsion, it only yields that. Good. That we will need later on. Question two. Expand in terms in terms of the connection coefficient functions. Here we are asked to do the covariant derivative of an zero to tensor field G with respect to the basis vectors of the vector space. We just have to plug in the definition, which is del after del x a of GBC minus gamma <coughs> A on the last slot. Here we need an open index. B G N C minus gamma N. Take again the same sum. C A G B N. This is just the definition. For later on, I will now introduce a short notion. We define G, B, C, comma, A as this guy. And I will use it from now on. Since we have that the covariant derivative of G is equal to zero, we already know that this equation yields zero. Expand the second. 
plug in the definition again, it's del after del xp, I, I already introduced the short notion, so we'll use it, it's g c a comma b minus gamma n b c g n a minus gamma n a b g c n now expand the last term it's all the same g a b comma c equals to gamma index summation index n a c g n b minus gamma n c b g a n equals to zero that's it question three by adding and or subtracting one two and three in a clever way we obtain gamma abc equals to one half of g inverse am from del of del xb gmc plus del after del xc gmb minus del after del xm gvz <coughs> and conclude that the conditions nabla of g equals to zero and t of c t equals to zero uniquely uniquely determine the connection coefficient functions in terms of the metric let's start we add equation 1 to equation 2 and subtract from there equation 3 and we know or this is zero, then all th these three equations are zero. Yeah. First, just plug in the definitions. It's G B C comma A minus gamma N B A G N C minus gamma N C A G B N plus g c a comma b minus gamma n c b g n a minus gamma n a b g c n minus the last equation g a b comma c plus gamma n a c g n b minus plus gamma n b c g a n equals to zero. Now, first look whether there are some gamma symbols vanish. Okay, we have to look carefully. We look for gamma n b a. n b a are again here, it's a b, but from the first, it, sure, from the first, um, from the first question, we already know that gamma n b a is equals to gamma n a b. Therefore, we just can switch these two slots. And we also know that the metric is symmetric, so we can change n to c, the places, not the right one. And we can also change this two, and we see that they two add up to minus two. This we will just keep in mind. We look for the next coefficients. We see gamma n c a g b n, where we found this again. Ah, here gamma n a c g n b. We can also exchange here the n b and the to b n and the a c to c a. Ah, we see this is two times the same term, but with different sign, so they cancel each other. Next term, we look at gamma n c b g n a and we also found it here gamma n b c can be switched g a n ah nice same argument as before so we see this is given twice and only these three other components are still there so this is equal to minus 2 gamma n a b g c n 
plus G B C comma A plus G C A comma B minus G A B comma C. So yeah, in order to get to this equation, we have to bring this on the other side and multiply with the inverse metric. So make plus two gamma n a b g c n and multiply all both sides with g inverse c m. No, here we find So here we find gamma n a b g c, sorry g c n I forgot the two g inverse c m equals to g inverse c m times G B C comma A plus G C A comma B minus G A B comma C. Okay, we can use here the delta criterion that G C N times G inverse C M is delta N M. Therefore, we can just rename this index N to M. And we also will divide with respect to 2. Therefore, we see gamma m a b is equal to one half g inverse of c m g b c comma a plus g c a comma b minus g a b comma c in this equation <coughs> we just have now to find yeah we, we just have to rename all indices in the right manner. Since only the C index is contracted, we only can rename this as a dummy index on the one hand side, but if we want to rename one of the other index, we have to do it on both sides of the equation. So, first of all, we call M A. M goes to A, ah, but therefore we first have to call A another way. We call a to B, uh, but therefore we have to call B to C, uh, but therefore we have to call the dummy index C to M. This is what it has to be done. Let's do that. That is equal to gamma, okay, I said M goes to A, I say A goes to B, I say B goes to C, is equal to one half G inverse of C goes to M, M goes to A, yeah, that's right, G of B goes to C, C goes to M, <coughs> A goes to B, plus C goes G of M, A goes to B, B goes to C, minus G of A goes to B, B goes to C, C goes to M. So, and... If we look it up, these are exactly the expression which are written above. Therefore, this problem is finished and we see that from the condition that we have a torsion-free <coughs> affine connection and we also have the compatibility criteria that um, the covariant derivative of g with respect to any vector field is zero yields directly to the connection coefficients of the levi chivita connection. We continue with exercise 4 on metric manifolds, massaging the length functional. Modifications of the length functional that simplify calculations but do not change results. Question 1. Let gamma be a smooth curve from 0, 1 to m on a smooth manifold MOA. Now consider a second curve, gamma tilde, going from zero to one, eh, going from zero one to M defined by gamma tilde of lambda defined with respect to gamma of sigma of lambda, where sigma 
as a map from 01 to 01, which is increasing and bijective and smooth. We should now show that the length of both curves is the same. Therefore, we, star we start with the left-hand side and calculate to the right-hand side. Plug in the definition first. L of gamma tilde is equal to the integral from the limits 0 to 1 d lambda square root of g a b evaluated at the point gamma tilde of lambda times gamma tilde dot with respect to the ace component of lambda times gamma tilde dot b square root close bracket close lambda missing so now plug in the definition of gamma tilde and plug in the definition I will remind you on that that gamma tilde dot the eighth component is just defined as x after gamma tilde the eighth component prime evaluated at lambda this is just the definition of the component functions of a vector so integral from 1 to 0 uh, from 0 to 1 d lambda and I here missed the lambda again is equal to the square root of g a b of gamma of sigma of lambda bracket 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 times x of gamma tilde but I know that gamma tilde is just gamma after sigma so gamma after sigma the eighth component derivative evaluated at lambda times the same guy again bth component derivative evaluated at lambda square root finished so in the next step we first will use here the chain rule it's again the integral from 0 to 1 d lambda square root of g a b of gamma of sigma of lambda bracket 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 times general autoderivative x after gamma eighth component prime evaluated at sigma lambda times sigma dot lambda in a derivative times x after gamma bth component der derived the derivative taken evaluated at sigma of lambda times inner derivative sigma dot lambda square root close now we see that this is two times in here so we have shifted out of the square root and the square curves with the square root and we see that the gamma depends on G depends on gamma after sigma and all of these term, terms as well. So one more step is needed here. We see that we have to change our parameter. We do a substitution, so called. We say we, we introduce a gamma hat, which is defined by sigma of lambda. But to transform this guy correctly, we need to calculate d of lambda hat with respect to lambda which is equal which is equal to sigma dot lambda aha as I mentioned we plug this guy we bring this guy in front of here and if we write this equation somehow like that we see that we already have changed this guy and now we also plug in for all sigma of lambda just lambda hat, this guy, this guy, and this guy, 
Yeah, I will write it down and let, in the first place, the limits open and explain what I do there in a second. It's the square root of GAB of lambda hat. Sorry. It's truly not right because we have to evaluate the point of the manifold. It's gamma of lambda hat times x after gamma, eighth component, prime, lambda hat times x of gamma, bth component, derived, taking the derivative, lambda hat. Ah, okay. I already say that I do not talk about the limits yet, but since we know that the lambda function is increasing by checktive, we know that the limits stay the same. So now, last step, we already know that this are just a longer notation of gamma eighth component derived of lambda hat. This the same for beta. Ah, for here, exactly the same is written as here, just with lambda hats instead of lambdas and with gammas instead of gamma tildes. Therefore, what is written here is L of gamma. Therefore, we have shown that the length is invariant under increasing bijective reparameterization. Question 2. Show that the Euler Lagrange equations for Lagrangian T have precisely the same solutions as the Euler Lagrange equations for the Lagrangian L, which is defined as the square root of T, if of the later one only selects those, those solutions that satisfy the condition T equals to 1 on their parameterization. Okay. We will just calculate this. I think you all know how the Euler-Lagrange equations look like. It's defined as dl after dq dot eighth component. After you've taken this, you take the derivative with respect to the parameterization. <coughs> minus, with respect to the parameter, I'm sorry, minus d of l after dqa equals to zero. Okay, now just plug in the definition of the square root of t for L. This is equal to d of square root of t dq dot a dot minus d square root of t dqa equals to zero. Aha. We now have to do two things. We can first do apply here the chain rule in both parts. That means we just do the derivative of del of square root of t. And you all know how this works out. It's just 1 over 2 of the square root of t of d of t d q dot a dot minus the same guy appears here 1 over 2 of square root of t d t with respect to d q a uh -huh. and since we know that t should be 1 all along the parameterization We can, pl we can pull it out here because we just take the derivative with respect to the parameter. Aha. So what is written here again? It's 1 over 2 of square root of t dt dq dot a dot minus 1 over 2 square root of t dt dq a equals to 0. Yeah. Just cancel this two guys. And what is written there is, again, the Euler-Lagrange equations for t. 
you can ask, why the hell should we do that? It's very simple. Because we see that in the length function, we have a square root here. And we now show that the euler lagrange equations do not change whether we have a square root or not. That simplifies, simplifies calculations. We continue with exercise 5, a practical way to quickly determine Christoffel symbols. In a concrete case, rederiving the euler lagrange equations is quicker than using the general formula we found for the Christoffel symbols in exercise 3 of this exercise sheet. Question. Derive the geodesic equation for the two-dimensional round sphere of radius r whose metric in some chart is given by this expression. Let us shortly remember what the geodesic equation is. It was gamma dot dot eighth component plus big gamma a, b, c, gamma dot b, gamma dot c equals to zero. I already write here the gammas, and these are the gammas of the levi civita connections, since we decided that the geodesic should also be the autoparallels. Okay, we keep reading. And the metric is given by this expression, and we should derive all this via a convenient euler lagrange equation. In order, yeah, and we lighten the notation with t these two guys. Aha, what was all this about? We just should write down the euler lagrange equations. We, we had it with respect to some length function L. It has this form. Oh, should use the same L as before. And I should keep, keep my notation straight. So I should use, again, the gammas, gamma dot A and gamma A. I have to explain some things. We can now, instead of using the length function, although the square root, where was a square root in there, although the length function without the square root, what we derived in the exercise before. So L in our case is just G A B gamma dot a gamma dot b. Now I say one, once again what gamma a is. And gamma a is just defined, gamma a of lambda is just defined as x a after gamma of lambda. So in our case it's just theta of lambda and phi of lambda for 1, for a is 1 and a is 2. Good. Now write down the explicit form of the L in our case. L equals to GAB, uh, this guy, so we see that it just appears if the two indices are the same, because it's diagonal, it's R squared time theta dot squared plus R squared times Theta, uh, sine square of theta times phi dot square. This is the guy we have to calculate the Euler Lagrange equations for. Now we do that. <coughs> we first do the first derivative with the derivative with respect to the first entry. And the first entry was theta. C theta dot minus dl after d theta. Deriving this guy, we see in the first the first part gives 2 times r squared times theta dot. The second term gives nothing in here. And here we see we have to derive this guy. It's 2 times r squared times sine of theta times cosine of theta times phi dot squared. I forgot here the dot. Here it is. So I have to take the derivative here again. So it's, this is all equal to zero. 
So I see it's 2 times r squared times theta double dot minus 2 r squared sine theta cosine theta phi dot square. Now I can divide through 2 and r squared and have the first euler lagrange equation. And I will write it down. It's theta dot dot minus 2 times r squared. I should remember what I divide through. <laughs> sine of theta, cosine of theta, phi dot square equal to 0. Now I'll do the same thing for this second equation. It's dl after d phi dot dot minus d l d phi. Good. Let's calculate that. This guy again, we see that only the second term contributes here. That's r two times two times r squared sine squared of theta times phi dot squared phi dot I do the derivative I did the derivative dot minus second term doesn't appear anywhere. So we do here the derivative with respect to the parameter and we see now theta and phi depends on this. So we have derive both. We need the product rule. It's 2 times r squared, bracket. Here for the autoderivative, 2 times sine of theta times cosine of theta times, times theta dot times phi dot plus the other term sine squared of theta times phi dot dot. I also can divide this to, with respect to 2r squared and bring it in, this, in the same form as this equation. Therefore, we have phi double dot plus, yes, 2 times, the 2 is still there, sine through sine squared is 1 over sine, cosine through sine is cotang. Co the cotangent, cotangent of theta times theta dot times phi dot equals to zero. Since I already said, yeah, and I always divide through, not by. <laughs> okay, just joking. Um, since I al already said that I want that the geodesics should also be the straightest curves, we now can read off the gamma symbols of the Levi-Civita connection right from these two equations. I will write down the autoparallel equation, what I always use in the same sense as the straightest curve. It's just a notion. I'll write it down again to read up more easily. Gamma dot b gamma dot c equals to zero. Therefore, I can see from the first equation that gamma one, it's the a over here, b c, you can look what b c is, ah, it's two, two, since only phi dot appears and this multiplied we have that this is minus sine of theta cosine of theta. That is the first Christopher symbol in this chart. Now we just look at the second equation and we see that from there we can read off gamma 2, then here is a 2, of R12, very good, is equal to 2 times cotangent of theta. And I now really did a small mistake since we know that gamma from the torsion free, we know that gamma ABC is gamma 
ACB, we have to distribute the two over the two gamma symbols, gamma 2, 1, 2 and gamma 2, 2, 1. Therefore, I already answered the next question. Yeah, we finished to calculate the Christoffel symbols for the round sphere. Continue with exercise 3 on metric manifold. 6. Properties of the Riemann Christoffel tensor. Various algebraic symmetries that a plain Riemann curvature does not feature. Question. Show that the chart induced basis fields act on the coefficient functions as the following. In order to show that, we start with the following expression. G inverse of AB times GBC. Yeah, and we will calculate that. We will see that this is the same as del AC. Now we can do the derivative with respect to this guys on both sides. So do d x del after del x d and here also del after del x d. Since we know that the delta function is constant, we know the left hand side is zero. It's not the delta function. Since we know that this guy is a constant with respect to the vector field. Okay. On the right hand side we need the product rule. Therefore we do del after del x d g inverse of a b times g b c plus g inverse of a b <coughs> del after del x d of g b c. Ah, we are almost there. We just bring this guy on the other side, or this guy better, and multiply with the inverse of g b z. The inverse of g b z, since we already use b, we call it g c e for example, yes. And from now on, if I have the G with index up, it's always G inverse. It's just a short notation and it, yeah, I will surely forget it anyway. So, let's do that. Calculate this. Then we have um, del after del x d G G A B times G B C G C E equals to minus G A B G C D no not G C D G C E and del after del X D G B C so we see here again a delta so this is delta B E so we just can rename B to E. With my matrix pen, it's very easy to do that. Yes, and if we compare the indices, we see that these two guys are the same. The second question is, use normal coordinates to find an expression for the riemann christoffel tensor which is given by RABZD is defined by GAKRKBZD at a given point P in terms of the metric GAB and its first and second derivatives at that very point. What does normal coordinates mean? It's a very good notion because in normal coordinates there exists a point for which the gamma symbols vanish and this we will use heavily in this exercise. So, before I start calculating, I will define one more notion just for shorthand side. It's if you do the second derivative of G A B X C D X D, then I will denote that by G A B comma C D. 
this I will use heavily. Okay, let's start. R A B C D is equal to G A K R K B C D. Plug in the definition of the Riemann curvature that was given by one half that was given by, I'm confused, I'm sorry, del after del xc of gamma abd minus del after del xd del after del xd of gamma abc plus gamma gamma minus gamma gamma with the indices distributed in the right way. But as I already explained, we are in normal coordinates, so the gammas are zero. Therefore, I can cross them out. What I also can obtain here is that these two expressions are symmetric or are the same just with C and D exchanged. This I will denote by minus C D. Now, in the next step, I just plug in the Riemann Christoffel symbol, uh, Christoffel symbols, which were defined by one half, the G A K stays in front from here, D after D X C, big bracket, of now the definition, it was something like G K M of del after del x b g m d what I shortly write down by g m d comma b plus g b m comma d minus g b d comma m bracket close and the same term with c and sorry minus C and D exchanged. Okay. What I can, what I need to do now is to apply the chain rule, uh, the product rule, at these two guys. That's one half G A K of. I den denote the derivative shorthanded. G K M C times G M D B plus G B M D minus G B D M first part of the product rule plus G K M times G M D comma B C plus G B M comma D C minus G B D comma M C and all the same stuff with C and D exchanged. In the next step I will use this expression which we calculate in the first question. So plug in this definition. It's G A K times minus. I bring it out. A little bit, bit more of space. Minus G. I have to see. It is K. I need no new indices. L because it's a summand. Um, times G M new I need a new symbol um, call it N of D after DX what is written above it's G comma C and 
in the chi the two indices are summed over L N. I think I have done it right. So I can go further on. Let me see. Short second. Yes, that's right. I write out the other terms as well. Plus G B M D minus G B D M plus G K M G M D comma B C plus G B M comma D C minus G B D comma M C close bracket minus C D exchanged. Now I can use again the delta here. G A K G K L is delta A L, which means that I can just call the L in here A. This symbol still stands in front. It's minus one half G K L G A N C of all these bracket terms blah 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 minus C D. I just do not like to write it again. So now see whether we can see there somewhere the Christoffel symbols again. And yeah, it's possible. Actually, as one can obtain, let me think about, yes, exactly this was the de definition of the Christoffel symbols. That is, this guy, GKL, takes the role of GKM, GKL, and all these guys in here, is it right? Yes, it is, are together, I forgot the bracket here, see, are together the Christopher symbol again. So, since I know this is already zero, the whole term vanishes. Only this term overlives, and in here the same happens with CD exchange. Though the first term of this both terms in CD exchange vanish as well, and just this three guys overlift this. Okay, I write it down again. It's minus one half G A K times G. Did the indices wrong? G a K times G K times G K M G M D B C plus G B M D C minus G B D M C. That's right. And now I take the minus CD part, means one half GAK times minus minus gives the plus GAK GAK um, GMC BD plus GBM. CD, I need a bracket here, otherwise the signs are wrong. Here, a comma, minus G, B, C, comma, M, D. Now I really write out also the CD combinations. What I see here, and I forgot the G, A, K, uh, I forgot the G, K, M term over here again, I'm sorry. Ah. I easily to here bracket and delete this guy. So now it's right. And here has to be a minus sign as well. Okay. Now I look closely and I see that this term when is with this term and only this, this, this and this term overlive. And I have here also, again, a delta, delta AM, so I call all M's A. It's minus a half G 
g a d b c minus g b d a c minus g a c b d plus g b c a d and that, this is the result we like to arrive and I forgot the bracket over here and I think I've done a small mistake in the fourth line and it was this one I pulled out the minus sign, here is a plus sign, plus, it's okay, I have a minus sign in front of all, it's still okay, ah, here I made the mistake, I pulled out a minus sign over here, sorry, I'm really sorry for confusing you, for the sign mistake, here has to be written a minus, since I plugged in the definition of this guy, what I have calculated above, there are minus coming in here, so I pull it out, but then I get another minus over here. Okay, this go through, ba, 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 see, here is a plus, then all minus are wrong, so how can I do it in the best way, fix it, I think, I kill this minus, and this minus, and yep, now the job is done correctly. Yeah, sorry for confusing you. But as you see, this is just in calculation with indices. You need to get used to, but it's not difficult. It's just a matter of concentration. Therefore, this question is answered, and we go on to the next. We continue with the last exercise. And we are now able to show in normal coordinates that R A B C D is equal to minus R B A C D. So we now show some Riemann Christoffel tensity tensor properties. Okay, we start. Definition or what we calculate was that R R A B C D is one half of G A D B C minus G B D A C minus G A C B D plus G B C A D. What we are looking for is that if we exchange all AB's down here to BA, we want to find this index combination just with a minus sign. I write it below. So we want to B, D, comma, A, C. Here we want to have a A, D, comma, B, C. And here we need a B, C, comma, A, D. And in the last term, we need a, a C, B, D. Yeah, let's look it up. Ah, A, C, B, D, here, with a minus sign. Perfect. B, C, A, D, ah, here, minus, minus, plus. Perfect. A, D, B, C, we found over here. B, D, A, C, we found over here. So, this is minus R, B, A, C, D. Very simple, actually. Go to the next question. We now show that R A B C D is equal to R C D A B. We write out again what you calculate two questions before. It's one half G A D B C minus G B D A C minus G A C B D plus G B C A D. What we are looking for now is if we exchange A B to C D. 
Okay, we'll write it down. Every A is getting a C, every D is getting a B, every B is getting a C, every C is getting an A. No, I've done a mistake. And yeah, because B is going to D, I'm sorry. Same again. B goes to D, D goes. <coughs> I'm sorry. I just want to write down the index combination D, B, C, A. And here's C, A, D, B. And here it is D, A, C, B. Aha. Uh -huh. Do we found this index combination again here? It's in this. In this round, we have to do one more step. And this is, we know that the G is symmetric. That means AD is the same as DA. And what we also know is, since we derive two times in the same coordinate system, the Schwarz rule holds. So I write it down. I just rewrite G, D, A, comma, C, B. Ah, it's this guy we are looking for with the right sign. Minus, here again, just the Schwarz rule, G, D, B, comma, C, A, times here again, just the Schwarz rule, and the symmetry of the metric, C, A, D, B, plus, and the last term I forgot about, this guy here, which goes with this guy and the same sign, plus, I write it down here, G, C, B, comma, D, A. And this is exactly the index combination we are looking for. Sorry for crossing this line. This is equal to R, C, D, A, B. Now, we are coming to the last property we should show today. We like to show that R, A, B, C, D is equal to zero. Okay. What do we have to do? Now we have first to plug in the definition of the anti bracket. The anti-symmetrized bracket is defined as the following. It's 1 over 3 factorial, where 3 is the number of indices in this bracket, of all different combinations, where if we change one index with another, we always pick up a minus sign. It's R, A, B, C, D minus R, A, B, D, C, plus R, A, C, D, B, minus R, A, C, B, D, plus R, A, D, B, C, minus R, A, D, C, B. Just checking whether I've done a mistake or not. A, B, C, D is right. One exchange. D and C is a minus. They exchanged C with B. Pick one more minus. It's plus again. Here exchanged C, A, B and D. One more minus. Perfect. Plus. I exchanged D with D. Pick a minus. Again a plus. Again. Perfect. Good. What I need now is both rules from here and here together. That means I know that this is anti-symmetric if I exchange in the first two indices, and I know if I exchange pairs of indices in this fashion, it's symmetric. In this sense, I also can exchange the last pair of indices, get a minus, uh, exchange this pair of indices in this way, exchange here C with D, pick up a minus, do it again in this direction, and pick up a minus at all. So let's see whether there are things like that. 
And it is R, A, B, C, D goes with, in this fashion, I think it's this one. It, this one, I'm sorry. Last guess, I guess everything, <laughs> but now I'm quite sure. This one, it's very easy because I just exchange D and C and pick up a minus again. I, I'm sorry. I'm running out of concentration. It's R, A, B, C, D. This both, guys. R, A, C, D, B, yeah. Now I have the I for it. It's again R, A, C, D, B. And these guys do the same trick. A, D, B, C, A, D, C, B. Perfect. As you see, playing with indices is nice, it's funny, and you get tired. So if you want to get to sleep, do that. <laughs> okay, just kidding. Okay, we now plug in the, defini uh, the result from the second question. What was that R, A, B, Z, D was a half, but I get it in each term. So it's 1 over 6 of G, A, D, B, C minus G, B, D, A, C minus G, A, C, B, D plus G, B, C, A, D. That was the first one. The second one. R, A, C, D, B. Okay, I know I have G minus G minus G plus G. And I distribute the indices in the right fashion. A stays A. That means A, comma, A, A, A. And C takes the role C takes the role of B. So C, 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 and C. Um, D takes the role of C. So D, 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 D. And B takes the role of D. So B, 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 B. As you see, normally it's enough to do it for three indices, but if you do it for all four, you really can check whether you've done a mistake or not. And it's really, really, really important to check after every step that the indices are right. Otherwise, you get nice results which are wrong. Okay, A, D, Z, B. We have to see, ah, okay, I write down the index game again, minus g, comma, minus g, comma, plus g, comma. A stays A, we already had that, A, A, A. D goes to B. Uh, and this guy, D, D. D, D, C goes to C, oh, and that's easy, C, 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 and B goes to D, B goes to D, D, I've done a mistake, B goes to D, ah no, I do not have done a mistake, I just write D again. B, D goes to B, B, D goes to B, B, and here again, D goes to B. So, close the bracket and check how these terms cancel. I firstly see that I have done a mistake over here because I see the terms do not cancel each other and if you follow me and see that I'm not the best calculator you see that I have an R, R, A, D, B, C have I made to R, A, D, B, 
PC. I warned you a second ago and I do the same mistakes. It's, yeah, you have to be concentrated. Okay, then I have to distribute the indices again. It's G. Okay, A stays A. We had this already. A, 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 A. B goes to D. D, 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 D. B goes, C goes to B. B, 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 and D goes to C. C, 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 and C. Well done. So, check a second time. G, A, C. DB, ah, and GACBD, ah, we know that it's because of the Schwarz rule, it's also GDB, so these two terms cancel. Next term, G, oh, my handwriting was very bad, DC, AB, where is it? It's DC, AB, it's over here, CD exchange, but it's okay, since the metric is symmetric. And we can do all the steps again, and we see it's zero. Altogether, what did we learn? We learn that we, if we exchange the first and the second slot in the RBCD, we pick up a minus sign. If we exchange the third and the fourth slot, we also got a minus sign. If we exchange pairs, that means AB with DD, what we have done here, we still have a plus sign. And the last thing what we learned is that RA of the antisymmetric part of BZD is zero. Therefore, the tutorial is finished and we see us the next time.